Welcome back everybody and uh, we're going to talk a little bit now about pistons and rings and liners and all things uh, to do with the, the barrels and the the moving parts of the engine. Um, I've been asked to explain a little bit more about one of the comments I made on a previous video about the rings and the gaps and the pistons and how you check them. The reason was that most people have said to me, look, you know, I don't have internal micrometers and I don't have all these fancy gauges that you need to be able to check these things and, and realistically you don't um, as long as you understand the principles of what you're trying to achieve and you've got a, a decent set of feeler gauges nice flexible feeler gauges you can do all the checks that you need and um, so one of the first ones is to check the the bores now the bores you want the bores to be in a good condition you want them to be straight and smooth and circular without any lips or, or dings and you can do that by looking at it you can, have a, a look down the liner to see if there's any clear scores and you expect the scores to be obviously up and down because that's the way this, the pistons move but also the pistons don't come all the way to the top of the liner and so therefore the rings don't always make it up the top and sometimes you might find a, find a lip um, obviously this is a twin cylinder engine and the pistons are uh, the running in this way and so therefore the gudgeon pins are like this so the wear will only occur here or here because the pistons themselves like this one here they're only able to move in this direction. They, they can't move in this direction, so they can't create wear on the side. They can only create wear here and here. So what we do is we check along here for the majority part of the wear. And you'll, you'll run your fingernail up the side and see if you can feel a lip. And on these, we're very lucky there is no lip. The next part is to check to see if uh, there's any scores in the bore. And again, we're lucky on this one that it isn't. I've deglazed the bore. And uh, we've done this using this device. It's a very, very simple honing machine. Um, but you, what you want to do is you want to make sure that the honing marks uh, operate in a, a 45 degree cross hatched manner. So you, when you look in the bore, you want to see scores that are like this. You don't want to see scores that are up and down because what that'll do is that'll allow for little grooves that will allow for the, the compression to disappear down the side of the rings and will then obviously minimize um, engine performance and you don't want the scores to be in a circular pattern because what it'll do is it creates little ridges for the rings to pick up on so you want to be able to have um, this running in here like this um, put a little bit of oil in it I've oiled those stones up and you want to run it really slowly but you want to move it like that so you get a 45 degree I don't know if you can see that on there and you can see the 45 degree uh, honing marks on it so they, that's the bores that we have on the um, in, in the, the barrel itself. So you check for lips, you check for the, the scores at the other end, and you check for any damage or anything that you can see on it. And a lot of it's to do with just feeling it and seeing if you can actually pick anything up as you run your fingers and your fingernails over the bore. These are okay. I'm, I'm happy with these. It's been honed. It's been checked. Uh, there's no lips on it so therefore i'm happy with it but I, I don't know what the size is and i don't know if it's circular what i need to do is i need to make sure that the pistons are going to fit in the bore properly and i could do this by carefully measuring all of this and i can carefully measure all of this but i don't have those tools and really what you want to do is you just want to make sure that this piston fits in that bore and it's got the right tolerances so we'll start with the pistons um pistons are the whole design of pistons is all very clever and there's an awful lot of technology goes into them. Uh, you all know how it'll work, you know, the con rod goes on here, there's the gudgeon pin in, and it works like this. So it goes up and down in the bore, but it also rotates in this direction. So therefore, the wear is going to be on the edges here and here. It's not going to be on this face or this face. The design of a piston is such that the diameter of the, the skirt is important. And in some pistons have the skirt that goes all the way around this doesn't it's had the skirt cut away um, sometimes you have a, a piston where it, the skirt is completely round but it's been ground in a cam shape to make so this diameter here will be bigger than this diameter it's quite common this diameter is the critical one this dimension here because this is the part that stops the piston from slopping about and I'll try and I've done a little sketch here I don't know if you can see this but I've done a little sketch to try and show you what I mean so the piston here is going up and down in the bore. It's the skirt that contacts the bottom of the liner that stops it, the whole piston from slapping about. This part of the piston should never contact the bore. 
you want this part of the piston to be solely to support the piston rings. And so the piston is designed like this. And so when you've got a piston, you can measure this diameter and you can measure the, the bore. But realistically, it's the tolerance you're looking for, the clearance between these parts. The tolerance for the top ring is far, far greater than the tolerance I would expect to see at the skirt. Now, for the, the top, uh, the for a, a typical race engine, road engines are slightly less, but for a race engine, the clearance between this diameter and that diameter is about 0.65% of the diameter of the bore. So this is an 80 millimeter bore. 0.65% means that the gap between this piston and that liner at the top should be less than 0.52 of a millimeter. And you can check that by getting, getting a set of gauges. Um, I've done all this so I know it's not gonna work because I know it's, less, it's a lot less than that. But you, you can test it by trying to get your feeler gauges down the side with the piston in place. And you can find out what the clearance is between the top of the piston and the bore that it runs in. So there I know that that is now well within tolerance. And so therefore I've got a piston that's, that's sitting in the, the line, in that top of that where the top of the piston matches the liner. Now you'll notice that I was measuring it across here and across here. I wasn't doing it that way and I wasn't measuring across here and across here because that is where the wear is likely to take place. And so I want to make sure that the the piston is properly aligned when I'm doing the measurements. So the top I expect it to be 0.65% of the bore. As you go down the second ring about 0.55% and when you get the skirt it's 0.25%. So 0.25% in this case is I think it's point let me just work it out 0 0.2 0 0.2 of a millimeter. So if I just move this to the side for a moment put this over I expect when I put that piston in there, I want to make sure that I've got less than 0.2 of a millimeter clearance. And there's the 10 going in. And the 20 is there. So therefore, I can't get that 20 in, but I can get the 10 in. So I know that that, that skirt is a good tight fit in there. So this is a good piston for that bore. I must have mixed them up. So what I've done there is I've checked the clearance between the skirt and the bottom of the piston. Uh, sorry, the bottom of the cylinder. And I've checked the top of the piston where the rings are against the top of the liner. And I know that that is within tolerance. While I'm looking at the piston, uh, I want to make sure that the drain holes are clear. So on the you've got the first ring which is the compression ring you have the second ring which is just called the second ring and then you have the oil scraper ring and there are a number of holes in the piston there which are oil drain holes i want to make sure they're all clear and uh, you can see there they are because you can see my finger just going in that you can you can blow them out you can run a, a pipe cleaner through it you can do whatever you need to do but make sure they're clear especially if there's any debris or lump chunky bits of char uh, carbon that have got in the way you just want to make sure they're all clear in this case i've got four four oil holes on each side and i'll just go and check that all those are clear that is all i'm going to do when we're talking about the, the pistons themselves um, because we've spoken about the drain holes we've spoken about the way that these th pistons are designed and how they work and how this is the important part but just to give you uh, I'll, I'll try and show it here i don't know if it's possible but if i should just show you how the top of these pistons are tapered if i wind those Put the two ring gaps together like that and I hold a, a straight edge over the skirt I'll get the smallest gauge see there's no I can't get that feeler gauge in under the, the ruler but up here I can he says uh, just proving it can't be there so you can see that there's a clearance so that diameter is smaller than this diameter and that shows this tapering effect and you can measure that directly from the, on the piston by putting a straight edge on it and just measuring the the gaps between uh, the third ring, the second ring, and the first ring. Obviously, you can't do it with a skirt because the skirt you want to measure against the liner. They're the pistons. They're the bores. Um, 
when you take these things apart, you want to make sure that the, um, the that it's been working properly. So I always take the top ring out. You want it to be a, like a beautiful mirror finish. And you see in both cases, both sides, that's, that's fine. You want to check on the outside here to see if there's any brown marks of any kind. Any brown marks will be from blow-by. And the blow-by will either be because the ring is damaged or the bore is damaged. And normally you'll have found something wrong with the bore. And when you'll be able to say, ah, yes, it's been because of this. Sometimes it's because of an oil ring, but you'll be able to look at the rings and the bores and find out where your problem is. I've got nothing to show you here because this, this ring's in very good condition, and so are the pistons and so are the bores. What we'll do is we'll try and talk about the, the, the action of the, the, the rings themselves. So this ring, the whole idea is that it, it's obviously going to seal between the piston and the, the bore and make a good, a good seal. Um, so what I want to do is you want to check to see if the the ring fits properly and so you just put the ring into the bore make sure that the, the it's level like that and then you measure the clearance at this uh, the ring gap and I know that that it's it's a very very tight 0.4 of a millimeter the ring gap I want on the compression ring on a race engine I expect it to be 0.5% of the bore diameter if you're running road engines, use 0.4%. But 0.5% of the bore diameter is the ring gap that I expect. In this case, it's 0.4. Any any bigger than that, it, it's bigger is going to be okay because it's going to give you um, a little bit more space for ex thermal expansion. But any less than that, you're going to get into a bit of bother. So I want to make sure I'm going to be able to get my 0.4 feeler gauge into that ring, uh, into the top ring when it's sitting in the bore. Now we know that the the piston operates all the way through the, the the cylinder so what I do is I want to make sure it works at the top of its stroke middle of its stroke and the bottom of the stroke now I know that the stroke in this engine is 74 millimeters I've got a little screwdriver here that's about 35 millimeters long and so that's a bit more than that and I can use it to basically set this ring at halfway down set the ring halfway down just I'm just using this as a, a measuring stick you can use any other measuring stick that comes to hand and um, there we go so that ring is now sitting halfway down through the stroke if the bore is the same size and it hasn't worn and it is all parallel I should have the same clearance and what do I do which is good news I'll try and see if I can get a 50 in there see if it's got a little bit bigger no I can't so therefore I've got exactly the same gap clearance at this point as I did at the top so therefore the cylinder is straight I do the same at the bottom I do the same with this ring and this bore and you get this I've, I've got the same information I've noted it all down but that tells me whether that bore is the same diameter or whether it whether it's bigger or smaller as it goes down or whether it's tapered or whether it's straight but that tells me it's straight and it tells me that, that ring will seal at the top and the middle and at the bottom again 0.4 of a percent of the bore diameter for a road engine 0.5% of the bore diameter for a race engine for the top ring. Second ring is a little bit higher, maybe 0.6. Um, and the oil ring is obviously something completely different because that's just a, a scraper ring. Um, and they're the, they're the numbers we tend to use. And when we're talking about the rings themselves, some people are confused as to what they actually do. So I'm going to try and explain a little bit more here. So piston ring sits in the piston and it butts up against the liner. So there's the piston, there's the liner, there's the ring. And a lot of people think that the ring stays in contact with the bore because it's springy. You can see that's a bit springy. Uh, that's not the case. What keeps the ring in contact with the bore is the pressure. I'll try and use a pointer stick here with my pen. Is the pressure from the combustion chamber. So the pressure from the combustion chamber will go down between the piston and the liner across the top of the ring and in the back of the ring and push the ring against the liner and so it's the pressure of the engine that makes these rings work not the springiness the springiness helps but it's the pressure behind the ring that makes the ring work so you need two things to make that work you need the gap behind the ring for the pressure to act on which is obviously on the inside of the surface here and you need a gap between the ring and the top of the groove to allow pressure to get in there you can go into great de details about measuring how much this sits inside the groove and how much slop there is 
Uh, I, I won't get into that on, in this video, but what I will do, which is really, really important, is to show you how we we check that the ring fits in the groove properly, because this ring, I suppose I should have to do it like this, it'll be in the same orientation as that. I want that ring to sit in that groove, and I want to try and measure this gap. It needs to be a small gap, so it's down to the five. I want to be able to just get the five in there, which I can just do, so you can see I've got the five feeler gauge in there. Helps if you don't throw everything on the floor. I'll see if I can get the next feeler gauge in there. And I can't. If I can get the next size feeler gauge in there, that gap is too big. The gap has to be ideally 0.4, oh sorry, 0 0.04 to 0 0.05 of a millimeter. It needs to be big enough to allow a little bit of pressure in the back, but it mustn't be too big. If it's too big, yeah, you get the pressure will go through it, that's fine, the pressure will get around to the back and it'll make the ring work, but the ring will flutter because it won't get enough support when it's uh, when it's going on the downstroke. So at the bottom, the ring will start to flutter when the pressure disappears, especially in the in, on the intake stroke. So you need to make sure that that ring fits in that groove very, very, very tightly. You've got a little bit more space on this one because this isn't having the same requirement for pressure. But again, if you can keep it to 0.5, point, point 0.5, I keep saying 0.5, 0 0.05, which I've got there, then you're in fine shape. That is, that is a bit loose, that one, so I'm a bit concerned about that. I might have to have a look at that in a bit more. No, I can't get that in there. Okay, so again, I'm looking at 0.5 clearance between the ring and the ring groove so really that's it that's the the whole of the talk i wanted to go on about pistons rings bores you can do all these checks in a lot of detail you can make sure that that piston is correct for that bore you can look at the way that it wears in the in the bore and you know where to look for you can understand how the rings fit in there and what it does and you've done all of that with just a set of feeler gauges and an understanding of, of how the engines work Okay, folks, next stage will be to put all this together and put this set of barrels onto my engine, uh, but that'll be for another video for another time. Thank you.